and welcome. We're here in the Otways in southern Victoria to go chasing waterfalls. Um, and I just thought in these videos I might take you through my landscape photography uh, sort of planning and composition process just so you get a feel for what the process is like behind the scenes and what actually goes into making one of these photos. Uh, so first of all the location, uh, so I said we're in the Otways but in particular here at Beauchamp Falls. Um, I was just down at uh, Hopetown Falls just before this. Um, I think it's one of the more sort of popular waterfalls in this region and Beauchamp's a bit uh, less photographed and even though I've been to Hopetown about I think five or six times now I actually haven't been to uh, Beauchamp, so this is my first time here on location. So I thought it's as good a chance as any to uh, come down and check it all out. I've seen photos of Beauchamp Falls before. Um, it's quite a sort of temperate rainforest here. Really nice and lush ferns and um, nice sort of falls coming down in one single fall and then a bit of a river in front. So we've had a bit of a rain recently, so I'm hoping there to be a bit of uh, flow over the falls. And I've got up early here on the weekend um, basically to beat the crowds out here. Uh, the Otways can get a little bit popular. Um, it's a bit of a tourist destination, particularly Hopetown. And there were already another three cars down there to photograph the falls. Um, but here at Beauchamp, I just pulled up at the car park before and I'm the only one. So uh, I should have the place to myself and it gives me a bit more sort of freedom and flexibility in terms of composition. The walk down to the falls themselves is about, it advertises an hour and a half return. Um, I've heard reports it's a little bit quicker than that, so I don't think it's too strenuous walk. It's quite easy, flat grade here at the moment. It's just taking my time and enjoying the scenery. Now in terms of conditions, I've actually been wanting to come out here for quite some time now, but it just hasn't aligned with the rain or the sun or work or things like that. But um, today's a quite an ideal day for it. We've had plenty of rain over this last week. I've been checking uh, weather maps, rainfall charts of the region. They had quite a bit of a steady rain here over the last couple of weeks. So it means there should be plenty of water in the waterways coming down and reaching the waterfalls to get that sort of nice flow coming through. And also perhaps just as importantly, it's been quite overcast, there's plenty of cloud cover around which means that there'll be no harsh light coming down and striking the rocks because even quite early on in my photography sort of development I'd be out shooting waterfalls in the middle of the day and you get this really bright harsh sunlight coming down and striking the rocks and the water and you get these really blown out highlights that pretty much just turn to white and yet all the shadows under the ferns and trees is just pure black and it's really sort of harsh and too contrasty. So when you've got cloudy days like today it really provides that sort of that even lighting across the entire scene. Now just some quick thoughts on composition um, as we're making our way down to the falls. Like all landscape photography, I do keep in mind the rule of thirds when I go about it. So whether that's a nice little sort of fern in the, in the foreground third or some nice flowing water over the rocks. Um, and then typically the waterfall is kind of in the sort of the upper or side third, uh, sort of coming down and flowing into the scene rather than running away out of the scene, sort of place it say on the left third and then flow across across the right of the photo. Once again that's just more of a guideline than an actual rule. Um, so it's really to get down here. I'm, as I said I haven't been down here before. It's really to get down and sort of take my time, have a look at have a look at the water flow, have a look at the trees, the rocks, that kind of thing, and see what's a nice sort of pleasing harmony to the scene. And next up is gear. And a lot of people, and myself included, like to say that gear really doesn't matter. It's more about the photographer and the composition and the scene. And that is true, but in landscape and particularly waterfall photography, uh, gear does make a difference to that final photo. Um, so I think the two most, or well, maybe three most important things are A, a tripod, you really need that sort of sturdy base to get those sort of silky smooth long exposures. I'd also recommend a wide angle lens just so you can get in the foreground and the waterfall itself. But additionally, and this is something I've only really been using for the last maybe 18 months or so, um, is a polarizing filter. Um, they really do come in handy just to cut out the glare on the water and the ferns, particularly if it's been sort of raining like it has been out here. Um, that sort of those shiny surfaces do really create like a sort of a really bright highlights and sort of glare, like I said, that sort of add to that sort of harsh contrast that you don't really want. In the waterfall scenes or the waterfall scenes that I capture, I'm really going for that sort of that dreamy scape, that sort of 
ethereal look. So a polarizing filter really does help to cut down that sort of that harsh glare off those wet surfaces. And it also tends to bring out the greens. So it's really quite nice with these sort of trees and ferns around and moss. It really sort of brings out those really vivid, lush sort of forest green colors. Another piece of gear uh, is just an ND filter, which is essentially just a dark piece of glass that would sit on front of the camera lens, just to limit the amount of light coming through. Um, and that allows you to achieve a, a longer shutter speed. I typically don't use ND filters. Um, when I'm shooting on an overcast day like this, it's still quite early in the morning, so there's not too much light around. So I can still achieve a shutter speed of almost up to one second um, through a little trick that I do with um, multiple exposures. So I'll talk about that down at the scene as well. For today, I've got my uh, Sony a7R2. Um, I've got a 20mm uh, prime lens. It's typically my astro lens. Um, but I do like the challenge that prime lenses sort of bring that force you to think a little bit more creatively about the scene. Because you can't zoom, you do really need to consider uh, composition and making sure that every part of the frame deserves to be there. So whether that's moving around or reaching up high or reaching down low to get that sort of particular angle on the scene. Um, I've definitely found that prime lenses make you focus on the composition of a scene um, a lot more than zoom lenses. Like I said, I've also got my nice sort of sturdy travel tripod. I think it's a Manfrotto B3. Good compromise between sturdiness and travel. Particularly if you're going on a hike like this, you don't want to be lugging around a really heavy, bulky tripod. And I've also got, I think it's a Hoya polarizing filter as well. I won't be needing a cable release. Um, I'll just be using a delayed two second shutter. If I'm shooting, say, a seascape, then I will use a remote shutter to eliminate camera shake, but to also perfectly time when a certain wave's breaking or crashing against a rock. Whereas with waterfall scenes, even though it's still long exposures, um, the scenes don't really tend to change that quickly. So I can afford to get away with a two second delay and still get the exact same shot. I think we're getting close now and they're pumping. Now it appears there's a bit of a viewing platform up here. So I'm gonna go up and take a look. Then we'll go down to the riverside and see if we can snap a shot or two. Yeah, that's impressive. All right, let's go down and take a look and get a couple of shots. Last time we spoke, I was across the river on that side there, and then I may have got my feet wet across those pebbles. Didn't fall in, so that's good. Um, but yeah, got a bit wet, but here there's a much nicer composition with the river flowing across these boulders, creating little rapids. It's white streams of water which will show up really nice in long exposure. You can see them just there. So I'm gonna get set up uh, and then I'll take you through my uh, composition. Okay, so I may have just fallen into the water again. Um, but I also found a good composition down there. So I'm already wet. Let's go in and uh, try to get the shot again. Okay, we're uh, set up uh, in the water. Um, but the composition down here is really quite nice. And I think it's gonna be hopefully a bit unique down here because there's a sort of a standard view up on that viewing platform that most people get. Um, and also down below the river on that other side. But over here, it's a bit of a unique perspective looking back at the waterfall. Um, so I'll take you to my camera's view so you can see uh, the effect of the polarizer. Here's without the polarizer, and here's with the polarizer. You just see that it really does bring out those blacks and cuts down that glare, so it's a nice sort of more even exposure. My uh, camera settings, like I said before, so without the ND filter, I've actually bumped the aperture, I think, up to F20 for the actual main waterfall, um, which gives me an exposure of about 0.8 seconds. I've done a second exposure 
for the water in the foreground at about a third of a second, just bringing the aperture down about f14. Um, just so you can still see a little bit of movement in the water and it's not completely blurred out, so you still have a sense of motion. Um, and it also, it's a little bit windy here today, which means that the ferns are moving around as well. So I've done a third exposure um, all on the tripod, so it's really easy to sort of blend those exposures later in processing. That third exposure, I've done at 1 60th of a second. So I've really bumped up the ISO, I think about to ISO 1200. Um, just so that the ferns, uh, fronds aren't blurred by the wind. So they're nice and crisp and sharp. And later I'll bring that into processing and uh, combine the sort of the longer exposure for the waterfall, the medium exposure for the foreground and the rocks, um, and then the sort of the sharper exposure for the moving ferns, which hopefully aren't moving. So that's about it. I'm gonna get out of the water, get back home and dry off and then edit these photos and then uh, I'll give you a look at what the final image turned out to be. this um well, see, this is the first sort of video like this that i've ever done before so if you do like it if you do want to see more uh please do let me know um give me a like give me a comment share it with other photographers who you think might be interested um and yeah I'm, I'm keen to do more so let me know what you think um and hopefully i'll see you again soon all right see you later bye